it's kind of sad actually that there's enough people looking for this that we need to address it. How do I stop hating myself? My job here is to illuminate some things. I want you to notice some things. I am not here to tell you how to think, but I do want you to notice that you are thinking and this is going to change some things for you. How do I stop hating myself? Let's dig into the psychology behind that and see what we might be able to discover. This was first brought to my attention through Eckhart Tolle is a philosopher and an author and he wrote a book called The Power of Now, which I really enjoyed by the way. In that book, he shared a time that he was going through in his own life where he was dealing with some self-hatred, which is kind of weird when you think about it. And he pointed this out. He got to a point where he was to the point of taking his own life. He was suicidally depressed and he had this thought, I hate myself. Then he had another thought that saved his life. The next thought was, wait a minute. Who is this I that hates me so much? And who is this me that I hate? And it blew his mind and it saved his life. And it illuminates something that I think is really important here. Self-hatred, really? Is that even metaphysically possible? I don't know. I want to call that into question though and suggest that maybe there is some, I used to call it stinking thinking going on in our own mind. Maybe the problem isn't that you are hateful. Maybe the problem is in your thinking. And if you would be open to that for just a minute, I think you're going to see some things that are enormously powerful and ask yourself, really, am I two different people where one of me can hate the other? Is it really possible to hate yourself? Just chew on that for a minute and let's get into some practical stuff. The things I'm about to point out to you are things that I simply want you to notice. Again, I'm not telling you how to think. I just want you to see that you are. And until you see it as a choice, it's not. Everything that I'm about to share with you is based in choice, but it doesn't seem like a choice until you're able to see it as a choice and I hope that's what we can accomplish with this video. Number one, I want you to notice that you are judging yourself and your life. Just notice it. Now, judgment implies some kind of comparison because you can only be doing well compared to doing worse. And you can only be doing worse compared to doing better. So here you are perpetually stuck in a place where it is what it is and it could always be better and it could always be worse. Is that true? I'm not even moving forward until we establish that. I want you to think about this and don't take my word for it. You run it through your own filters and see. Is it true that however things are right now for me could be better? Oh, that's easy to see. Could it be worse? Yes, it could. And if you don't have a good enough imagination to come up with ways, maybe we should talk because I've got a really great imagination. I can always think of ways that it could be worse. And so can you. Notice that. Again, I am not telling you how to think. I just want you to notice that you are and that you're judging yourself. Got it? Second thing that I want you to notice is that you are predicting stuff aren't you? Yeah. Do you know what's coming? How are you doing next week? You don't know. You've got something to do with it, but just notice that you are predicting things to come. How you're doing, how other things are going to be, how things are going to play out. You are. You're predicting things. And notice that we're going to use that same scale because it could always be better and it could always be worse. And you're predicting that it's going to be one of those. It can't be exactly the same, can it? No, because at the very least you're going to be older, right? 
You might be more hungry, more tired, I don't know. Something's going to change and by your own evaluation, which you can't turn off because remember you are judging yourself, things have to be either better or worse by your own judgment. Just notice that you're predicting one of those and notice that you don't know what's coming. So that prediction that you have, even though you're sure that you're right, it's simply a prediction or a guess or a projection of what is to be. You don't know. Notice that. I'm not here to tell you how to think. I'm not here to insist that you predict things to be a certain way. That's not my role. I just want you to see that you're doing it. Notice it. Now that we're noticing all of these things, let's notice the third thing I wanted to call to your attention. Notice where your focus is. In my coaching, in my training, I break this down into four possible areas that can be defined by a quadrant system. And it breaks down into two dimensions, which are feelings and content. On the feelings end, how do I feel? How do you feel? Just use that as the distinction. How do I feel? How do, how do other people feel? And then on the content, about me or about you, about other people. You overlay those two dimensions and you get four quadrants. How I feel about myself. Do I like myself? Am I good enough, cute enough, smart enough? That's the first area. It might be on how you feel about me. Do you like me? Do you approve of me? Do you think I fit in? It might be on how I feel about you. Do I like you? Do I approve of you? Or it might be on how you feel about yourself. Are you doing okay? Do you like who you are, where you are? Now, those are just areas of focus. Notice that your focus is in one of those areas. I guarantee if your focus is in one of the first two, if I'm focused on how I feel about me or how you feel about me, I'm going to feel anxiety, some form of anxiety, either self-consciousness or insecurity. These are ways that we can describe it, but it creates anxiety. If my focus is on how I feel about myself or how I feel about you, the pitfall that we run into there is judgment. I mean the kind of judgment that has us criticizing ourselves or other people or hating ourselves. It tells us what quadrant we're in. So here's the challenge. What if you were to shift your focus to that fourth quadrant so that your concern is how other people feel about themselves? I want you to just play with that a little bit and see what it does. I guarantee that this is a way that we can get past some of that self hatred. While we're talking about focus, what if we were to look at where our temporal focus is or related to time? There's basically three options and those are present, future, or past. Notice where your focus is. When we tend to focus on the past, we start to feel things like regret or shame or self-doubts, okay? That, it, it pulls us into, oh, I did this or I did that and this didn't go well and that didn't go well and I haven't accomplished what I thought I would accomplish or whatever, okay? Our focus is in the past. What happens when we turn our focus to the future? Okay, now we're worried because we're good at predicting Notice that you predict stuff. And when we predict that what's coming is even worse than what we've already got, how do we feel? Anxious, nervous, upset, apprehensive? Notice it. When we come to the present, this is kind of cool. Just ask yourself right now, in this moment, what if anything is lacking? And you'll notice if you're honest with yourself, you're good right now, I mean in this moment. And if you feel some resistance to that, it's because your focus is getting sucked into, but I did this or I did that, or 
this is going to happen. See, you get off of the present and you get sucked into either depression or anxiety. Come to the now if you want to. But I'm not here to tell you how to think. I don't have that kind of authority. I just want you to see that you are. Notice where your focus is. Before I shared with you these four areas that I want you to notice, I suggested that they are all based in choice. Until you see it as a choice, it's not. So notice it first. And then you might start to ask yourself, can I change it? Do I have any choice in the matter? Do I have to think the way that I've been thinking? Or are there some other possibilities? I kept saying through that video that I'm not here to tell you how to think. I wish for you the most pleasant, happy, joyful life that you could possibly experience. So I kind of have some biases about what kinds of thoughts might get you there a little easier. And I'm here to help you, to get out of your way. If you want to have a little additional help, jump onto a call with one of our coaches. Go to drpauljenkins.com. While you're there, click on that big orange button and order a free copy of my book. I'll send it to you for free. You just pay for the shipping. I'll get it sent right out to you. If you do a little forward slash breakthrough call, that will put you right on the calendar where you can schedule a time with one of our certified coaches to discuss with you some other options that might be a great fit for you. We're